Tenzing Sidan La is the first professional Tibetan tattoo artist in exile. He is a senior artist and the founder of Tenzing Tattoos and Tibet Tattoos Revolution, New Delhi. His work is highly renowned internationally and also in India. Let's welcome Tenzing Sidan. Tenzing Sidan La, it's so, so nice to have you here finally. Welcome to Tibet TV show. Thank you so much for inviting me. First of all, it's an honor. You know, you guys invited me over here and uh, I'm really humble. Thank you so much. Tenzing Sidanla, you had quite a journey when it comes to your career life, you know, choosing from being a hairdresser and then sticking to being a tattoo artist. How did you figure out that this profession of being a tattoo artist was meant for you? After 12, when I was in college, I never thought about you know, being a tattoo artist. I always thought like, uh, okay, let me do those normal routines. Let me learn whatever it comes on the way. So I got an option of learning hairdressing. And uh, while I was doing hairdressing, there was no tattoo artist in Delhi. There was a one guy whom I know, CR Park, mm -hmm. over there. And uh, somehow like it clicked my mind that uh, in this uh, hairdressing job is quite tough for me. Even uh, before that, I just have entered inside the hairdressing in this academy. And before that, I even thought about uh, fashion designing as well. But I didn't enter that. Because I, uh, you know, uh, discussed myself, I thought myself, no, it wouldn't be a cup of my tea. Because I discussed with some of those professional designers. Mm -hmm. Even they told me there are a lot of expenses, things happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if I go back in my, from my childhood, I was good in drawing and painting since from my school time. Okay. From when I was in Delhi and then when I was in a uh, TCV Patliku. So from that, my journey started. My drawing teacher, Ge Jigtala, I will never ever forget him in my entire life. Uh, he pushed me so hard at that time. So from that moment, uh, you know, till the rest, till my class 12, I've been uh, into the sketching, drawing, wherever I took the competition. Luckily, I won first prize. So after that, even the care counselor, they pushed me towards the fashion designing. So it clicks my mind. Mm -hmm. But somehow, like, my family stays abroad, uh, my sister stays, stays abroad. So they give me an idea about, uh, you know, if you learn a hairdressing job, it is an artist job, you will get a good job over there. But somehow, it doesn't suit me. So when I thought about uh, learning tattoo at a hairdressing time, it clicks my mind and it was easier for me to, you know, those, uh, grab those detail and everything. And I started that profession from that onward. I heard in one of your interviews where you said that uh, you, you don't regret going into these fields like be, being in hairdressing and all of that because you said that you actually gained some knowledge from there. Like you know how you talk to your client and all of that, right? So you don't regret because you actually gained some knowledge where you can imply that in your this profession, the exactly, tattoo profession. Exactly. Uh, in my hairdressing time, one thing I learned is about the customer, the importance of customer. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, if you see a tattoo artist, they, they will just learn the drawing, sketching, they will just learn the tattoo and they just, they will start doing it. Whatever your business is running, it's all because of the customer. Exactly. So you should know the most important thing is how to tackle your client. I have met a client uneducated. I have met a client who are arrogant. I have met a client who are, uh, you know, a very high profile. Mm -hmm. I have met most of them. And I tackle them all the same way. Tensela, you have been in this profession for mm. over 16 years mm. now. And, um, you know, like we have heard that you have, you know, celebrities, actors, and, you know, even sportsmen coming to your studio to get the tattoo done. And they have loved your work. Yeah. And you were also one of the first Tibetans, mm -hmm. Tibetan tattoo artists, who was even the judge yeah. at an international uh, tattoo festival, which was held in Mumbai in yeah. the year 2019. We know that all this has not been an easy journey for you, you know. Exactly. It was not easy to reach at this level of success. You must have faced quite a lot of challenges on the way. Exactly. So can you share us about some of your challenges and how did you overcome them? The time I started my profession, at that time, nobody is there. You just need to work hard. At the beginning of my profession, the weakness, uh, the minus point about me was social media. Mm -hmm. I was not so much active in social media. Okay. I was only active in doing tattoo, handling customer. I was busy in that world. Mm -hmm. So after some time in 2013, I started my 
first uh, social media Instagram profile. After that, like uh, people started knowing me. Most of the time, what happens like uh, people who doesn't like me and they push me down through the social media. They even uh, you know do a some what we call the Google review bad things about me. Yeah. Even I don't know who are they. I don't even know. I just. I think this happens to most of the people. In the right? in the most yeah. of the profession, it happens. Exactly. It does. Mm -hmm. If, uh, it, if, if it comes personally uh, with my career, I will always advise every youngster whoever comes in a future, damn sure about it, they will become a better artist than me. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% sure about that. Now the technique has completely changes, everything changes. When these things happen, you just need to be confident, you just have to ignore everything, just be compassionate, ignore it, focus on your work. Look at the bright side. Exactly. And uh, moreover, being a Tibetan, that's the first plus point. Yeah. Being a Tibetan, so people always think they are passionate. They, they, have, they are very peaceful people. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, obviously. Actually, this is a, a very common act, you know. Like mm -hmm. there are so many people who will always try to let you down when they mm -hmm. see you rising high. But I'm so glad that now you have lots of followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I saw that you have more than 20k followers, yeah. and you are actually doing really well with yeah. whatever you're doing right now. Thank you, thank yeah. So, uh, Tensula, there is uh, this concern about tattoos causing skin cancer and other skin diseases. Mm -hmm. And since you have been in this um, business for over more than a decade, can you tell us how safe it is to get a tattoo? Uh, right now is 21st century. There are people, few people think about the tattoo pretty expensive, something a very you know on a cheap way. Mm -hmm. It's all matter if the 30 per the, uh, the above 30 percent people they yeah. know when they think about tattoo, mm -hmm. it's an expensive thing. Mm -hmm. So people spend lack lack on their skin. Mm -hmm. They decorate their tattoo, you know, on their skin. Mm -hmm. And there are 30 percent people when they think about tattoo, they think like 200 bucks. Yeah, it's fine. 300, 500. Yeah, it's fine. But they never think about the, what the artist is using, mm -hmm. how the artist is qualified, yeah. what the artist does. The artist have a knowledge. Mm -hmm. Some people think like if the tattoo artist doesn't speak English, or they doesn't speak those their native language, where whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, might may not be professional. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. Some people, they are so hygiene, they know, they know what to use, what not to use. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, there are like a tattoo bandage, tattoo color brands. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, people just started demanding wagon color, you know, in the tattoo. And people nowadays, they demanded UV color in the tattoo. So these things like, you know, uh, those Upgraded equipments, it's 200% safe, but the matter is that the tattoo artist is professional or not, and the equipment they use is, uh, isn't that they are using, reusing it, or is the color is expired or not, the needle are expired or not, what they are using, what they are advising after the tattoo, it's also very important. In India, there is no uh, legal professional papers to open a tattoo studio. You just mm -hmm. need, to, yeah, there, there isn't, haven't done. Mm -hmm. In foreign countries, you want to open a tattoo studio, you need a qualified. You need to get the permission from the government, mm -hmm. first thing. Okay. And uh, in India, there hasn't any started like that. So anybody can just open they a they tattoo can, can. studio in India? They, it's easy to open a studio, yeah. but it's difficult to run. So it seems like this profession, the tattoo artists, they have to be really careful and very knowledgeable about the ink that they're using, the they equipments that they're using. They should. They should. The, the best thing about uh, our things in tattoos is I'm very much honored and I'm very happy that this uh, the Germany brand, the USA brand, the color what they use. Before two years, I was not visible at all in their page. Mm -hmm. You see. Amazing tattoo artists, mm -hmm. internationally amazing piece, realism, full sleeve, full back, everything, amazing piece they do. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed that my page is now in their profile. The obstacles, everything is behind my ear, so I, exactly. always, I don't look back. Mm -hmm. I'm just focusing what I'm doing. I have a dream to open a lot of, uh, you know, a tattoo yeah, shops. Yeah. I have a dream my Tibetan colleague, they can open 
their own. They become a very better than me. They will open their studio. They will be in the judge level. You know, there are a lot of things uh, in this industry yeah. the youngster can do more than me. Yeah. And talking about youngsters, you said that you even have classes for the uh, younger tattoo artists who really aspire to become, you know, like, like you in future. Mm. So ca can you tell us a little bit about that as well? I have hired a few years, probably a decade. I, there are tattoo artists who just learned and started asking for job. They work with me. Yeah. And uh, there are a few artists whom I have seen only on Instagram. Uh, it's written, Tenzin Tattoos, I'm inspired from you. What I'm learning, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, you inspire me. Yeah. They are tattoo artists in Canada. They wrote like that and they are doing tattoo in their tattoo studio. So I was so happy to see that. And uh, now I have more than 10 Tibetan students. Mm -hmm. So among uh, those Tibetans, I see every energy, I see every, you know, how they are passionate about learning tattoo. Mm -hmm. Because the basic thing about this, uh, you know, the Tibetan, uh, what we call the art is very much deeply related with this tattoo. Nowadays, if you see a Japanese sleeve tattoo, you will see a Tibetan clouds. Mm -hmm. If you see a dragon, you will see the Tibetan design uh, dragons, yeah. the snow lion, whatever it comes on. Tenzila, as a tattoo artist, we know that it takes a lot of patience and you need to have that creativity in you in which you can satisfy the requirement of your client and ink in a way, you know, that is able to uh, catch the requirement of your client. So, uh, Tenzila, can you tell us like what other qualities are required in a tattoo artist besides patience and also besides, you know, the body language that we already spoke earlier? Mm -hmm. Apart from the creativity side, I will say the dressing sense. Really? That actually matters? It does. It does. It matters a lot. Okay. If a two professional tattoo artist sitting in a studio, you will not going to believe people knows me, I'm a senior. But sometimes those, my other colleagues who have a lot of tattoo, who have piercing, you know, who have piercing on their face, they color their hair, sometimes happens. People directly go to them, you know, directly go to them. And the second thing is when your customer comes to you, how you talk to them yeah. that matters a lot. Yeah. Patient is the basic root mm -hmm. in learning a creativity. When you started something, be patient, same till the end. So, uh, Tenzila, you, was all, you were also invited in Dharamshala by the Tibetan Career Center and you were asked to speak on career. Mm -hmm. At that time, you had met a lot of Tibetan youngsters and you got to interact with them. What do you think that the Tibetan youngsters should possess in order to uplift themselves and follow their future passion? Our Tibetan youths are very smart, very smart. I met a one boy. He told me, I want to open a cafe shop in Dharamsala. Mm -hmm. I remember that boy still. And uh, he, his dream was amazing. I want to open a cafe shop and where I can play music and where I can do tattoo as well. Okay. So I asked him, so when did you start dreaming about this? He told me before three years. And all the remaining students was laughing. And I told him there's nothing to love. He had a dream. So mm -hmm. when it's the dream, he wants to think about it. He have to act on that. Mm -hmm. To act on that, not only he can do it. He need uh, some backup. Support. He needs support. And support is not only a financial. It's your parent support. It's yeah. your brother, sister support. It's really needed. The Tibetan youngster should, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what should I say? They're active or should be practical. Yeah. They have to be. And when they are into practical, mm -hmm. they need a backup yeah. from the family, from the parents, from the brothers, sisters. It's really needed. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have those students, uh, some of them who are like, uh, what should I say, sponsored mm -hmm. by the ex-school, uh, mm -hmm. uh, senior school. Mm -hmm. So they are taking care of their living. And when I think about that, I really appreciate those kids. I really appreciate. They're helping them. They are making this boy dream. And beside that, uh, uh, when I'm with them, I am 200% sure they will be proud one day.
So, Tansila, I'm so glad that you have done it and you have proved to your relatives that you can also do it and you are actually doing really well and we know that you have a lot of followers who are following you and there are so many you know aspiring Tibetan artists who look up to you and want to be like you someday. Thank you so much Denzila for being a part of Tibet TV and thank you for coming to the show and sharing us about your challenges and how you are still overcoming them. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Bad TV.